Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Why did the PF lose power? And well, why did President Lungu lose with such a wide margin? So to start with, we need to put it on record that uh, the current president and uh, uh, leader of the op uh, opposition then, UP and the HH, had made a mountain of promises. He had made Zambia paradise on paper and on social media. So a lot of Zambians today are actively on social media. They followed him religiously and they celebrated him as a political icon. He promised the best in terms of fertilizer, fuel, electricity, milli meal, maize. Look, anything and everything in all mm. sectors. Mm. President HH became a darling. He became a political messiah. He crowned himself as a David or a Moses. He described whatever prevailed and pre existed in 2019 and before under the PF and under President Longo as ugly, mm. as evil, as negative. And he presented himself as a man who, is going to, who has the best skills to transform Zambia into a modern country, into a modern economy. He said he would fix it. And his, his main campaign slogan was, Bali will fix it. Mm. And Bali had postured to fix everything in all sectors across Zambia. That was his campaign message, and that's what made him popular, and that's what made him win an election easily. Not that he was voted by UPND cadres, because UPND up to now is not a national party. Mm. They do not have national structures. He was voted primarily by the, a revolutionary citizenry that wanted change, whom he had given so much hope. So we need to put it on record that not that President Lungu and the PF had failed. The PF and President Lungu, within the shorter period, they remained or they governed Zambians, so to speak, transformed this economy and this, this country. Zambia was a site of infrastructure development everywhere in terms of roads, mm. bridges, hospitals, clinics, schools, name it. There is no district in Zambia you go to where there is no signature of ECA and the PF infrastructure. Mm. So in terms of delivery, President Lungu and the PF delivered. But because in the opposition there was a man who had raised the bar mm. on paper, he was calculating, he had the calculator. He was calculating and showing formulas on how he's going to do better than ECA and the PF if he elected as president. I can assure you, what we saw in August 2021 was a revolutionary vote. Mm. That's the reason why President H.H. won with a comfortable margin across in Lusaka province and the Copa Belt. Because these are most urbanized provinces in Zambia anyway. Mm. So the people of Lusaka and Copa Belt province vote on the basis of the economy. Mm. He raised the bar very high. This is the man who got 95 in, who got 49 percent votes in Eastern Province, and that's the province of the Lungu comes from. But do you know the reason why? Mm. He had convinced Easterners, who are predominantly farmers, <laughs> that under his presidency, if they were getting two bags of fertilizer each or four each farming season, under him they will get eight or twelve. If you tell Easterners that message, who are predominantly farmers, you win their hearts. This is the man who won in the northern province. That was a PF stronghold by 51%. It's because of the same rhetoric and it's because of the same campaign message. He had given over hope of salvation 
of a Zambia which is a paradise. So I want to put on record that we shouldn't even talk much or blame anyone much as to why we lost in the PF. We had the man who had promised. You know, President H.H. spoke like Adolf Hitler. You know, Adolf Hitler made Germans mourn and cry when he's speaking because mm. he made them realize that we were suffering too much. I saw your recent article <laughs> where you compared and, President Hitler to Adolf Hitler. Exactly. Uh, wasn't that a scathing comparison? No, no, no. It's not. Adolf Hitler is one of the best political rhetorics we have ever had in history. Even at the point that the German was sinking in the Second World War, Germans believed that German was winning because of Adolf Hitler, because of the way he could speak and articulate issues. Yeah. And these are the skills President HH brings to the table, rhetorics, political articulation. Mm. That is so comparing and convincing. It can even make you believe that Zambia is a, has, has transformed to become a, a first world country. Mm. Mm. Yet mm. Zambia is still a third world country. Yeah. So, in terms of the skills of articulation and rhetorics, President H.H. H. And, and Adolf Hitler, there is a very strong commonality and comparison. That is a fact. And that's, as I said, that's the reason why it was very easy for him to win in 2021. It was the you, message of you, promise. You are a political scientist. Yes. You must have studied the two candidates. They were the two front runners. Exactly. The president, your president, who was your candidate. Exactly. And the opposition candidate. Uh, what did you do to t attempt to counter the, the strength? Because uh, I think the art is, is first to study your enemy exactly. and then demonstrate their weaknesses. Exactly. So you see, we, we had a sitting president as the presidential candidate on the PF ticket. He was not an opposition leader. Yeah. So he could not lie. And neither could he promise that I'll do this. His job was to account what his administration and his government had delivered to the Zambian people and tell the Zambian people that he's going to continue on that bedrock. So our campaign was strategy under ECA was very simple and straightforward. Sonta, Poor exactly. Just show us what you have done. Point at what you have done. Give us the evidence of what you have achieved. So the PF and ECA campaign team had less headaches are pointing at uh, hospitals, universities, uh, highways and roads across the country, clinics, police, uh, housing projects across the country that were done. We are talking about uh, milling plants under ZNS. We are talking about hydro power stations that are being upgraded and worked on across the country. So President Lungu and the, East, and the PF government didn't have headache in whichever way because there was evidence of what they had achieved and delivered. As I said, the Zambian people still wanted somebody who would do better because that person was a candidate and they had promised and they had guaranteed Zambians. There were instances, as you may be aware, that President HH could even give time frame mm -hmm. within which he's going to transform and change things. This is a candidate who would say, I have got partners in the U.S. If I'm elected president, 25, million, 25, billion, 25 billion dollars will land and hit this economy. Now, can you imagine telling and convincing citizens that if you elect me, within seconds, days or weeks, 25 billion would hit the Zambian economy. My brother, that's what every voter would want to hear. Anywhere in this world. So did you attempt to expose those as lies? It did attempts you, or you, you had hoped that Zambians would see through this paradise that was being presented? What was your mindset? Zambians were given an option to choose between a president who was promising, a presidential candidate who was just promising with rhetorics, and the sitting president who had delivered. And the Zambian people chose the one who had promised. Today, it's up to the Zambian people to look back and see whether what you promised them has delivered them or not. It's a conversation we maybe would have to chat later. Yeah, yeah. But I would want to put it on record that 
there is nothing to blame President Lungu for losing 2021 power because he delivered. There is everything to look at this president, the sitting president now, in terms of confirming what he promised to the Zambian people. Yeah, as we come to review now President Hainde Ichlem, and uh, this is where I would like us to take time. When we lost power, mm. there was a lot of personal criticism to you, especially you know, on our blogs, mm -hmm. on social yes, media, yes, 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 because yes. they felt that you as political advisor, you were responsible for the loss. How did you take that and how can you explain? Yeah, okay. Were you responsible for the loss? So the this president? is the way it works. This is the way it works. When you're a political advisor, you are an SG of a political party, you are around the president in an election year. You are like a football coach. You know, a football team has a coach. Has a, and the coach has got a team. So when you win, everybody is going to celebrate. They will dance and urulate in your name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But my brother, if you win and if you lose, sorry, if my brother, if you lose, and you lose the final game at a crucial tournament like the Afcon or the World Cup, just prepare for criticism as a captain of the team or as a coach of the team. So for me, it was something that I had to accept by virtue of my position anyway. Mm. Mm. We don't just celebrate success. We should be able also to absorb a criticism which comes during our defeat or low moments. Having lost that election in 2021, to me, was not the end of everything, even for ECL. Just like if you lose, if, you, know, you know, Argentina at the World Cup, they lost their first game. Yeah. But Argentina ended up winning the World Cup. So to me, that was like losing the first game in 2021. Oh, we still have an open future for the PF. We still have an open future for ECL. We still have an open future for Zambia. Let's see what happens if God is going to give us another opportunity to go, and elect, to go for another election and to be on the other side of HH, mm -hmm. this is the UPND. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. But I believe that we can still bounce back and do better. Just like Argentina lost the first game at the World Cup yeah. but ended up winning, I believe that can happen for PF and that can also happen for ECL. The fact that now is back. What happened in 2021? shouldn't make us lose heart. For the people that criticized me or insulted me, I can assure you I do not have any grudges against them. I understand as a coach for a team that has lost a crucial game, accept the criticism, accept insults, but that doesn't mean they hate you. They want you to do better. And I hope in future God can give us another political opportunity to run and manage such an assignment. And I think and I believe we'll do better. So we have President Nakainde Chilema who came literally like a messiah exactly. to the state of our economy, to the unemployment issues, uh, to the poverty levels in our country. He promised uh, cheaper essential you know, prices for mm. our essential goods. Yes. As we stand now, the country is mm. literally in a crisis. You were quiet for some time, but I think the political scientists in you Draw, drew you out yeah, exactly, and you exactly. began to yes, write yes. those articles. Yes. What, was, what prompted you to begin to write those articles to not only expose each number but analyze his policies and then give your perspectives? Okay, thank you. So the first one year for me was to allow him to, to settle and to, to take off in terms of fulfilling his campaign promises. That's the reason why I was quiet for the whole one year in 2021 and up to 2022. I was not active either on social media or anywhere on radio or TV. I was on sabbatical. But also I was praying and believing that the president in office, in the name of President Hakainde Hichilema, would have fulfilled or laid a stronger foundation to fulfilling what he promised in different sectors. Mm -hmm. By 2023, it became impossible for me to be quiet because the time frame he had given himself on certain sectoral deliverables had elapsed, and the president was scoring not only on zero, but on some of the key ones, negative, 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 and negative one, negative four, negative seven. So instead of just scoring zero, I was going into negatives. Mm, mm, mm. That propelled me and compelled me to begin to give feedback, assessments, as well as commentary, political commentary in terms of his governance, his governance style as well as deliverables 
up to to date. So you discover Where that are his major failures. So you discover that President H H no one gave him any deliverables. He gave himself deliverables. Mm. Mm. So we can't judge him based on what we think. We should assess and judge him based on what he promised and the standard he set for himself. For himself. If you are going to rank him and assess and rank him in the, sect in the health sector, one up to ten, is he sitting at what? He's sitting at one. Why? This is the government currently that has even failed to respond and manage a cholera crisis. For the t from the time he came into office, the Minister of Health has been running on a on a, I think, on a, on a pirate basis. Mm. Countrywide, there has been a report and evidence of no adequate or no medicines in clinics and in hospitals. Mm. Mm. Before 2021 in August, Zambia never had a crisis of the health sector. No. Under ECA and the PF, all the public institutions, clinics and hospitals, had adequate medicines and supplies. Whatever happened when President HH came into office, nobody knows, or maybe only God knows, that we started recording lack of medicines, even basic and most basic medicines, in the clinics and hospitals. No, here is what uh, the Minister of Our Health did, Honorable Sylvia Masebo. She abolished the procurement process That's it. without contingent That's measures. That's the point and now transfer them to ZAMSA as a procurement agency. That's required by law anyway. Mm, mm. But there were no contingent measures to ensure that the procurement process settles at ZAMSA and that there are no shortages across the country. This process took forever. In fact, they survived on the medicines that the PF left That's for a, a period of That's six to nine months. So I don't understand that incompetence, especially from Honorable Masebo, who has been minister in that portfolio before. And you see, under President H.H., H., they have fired the two permanent secretaries at the Minister of Health. And moved another up to three. Exactly. Mm. So that tells you the state of national crisis in the health sector. And that's the reason why we are on this page in terms of the cholera response. If you talk about the agriculture sector, it's another crisis. Yeah, you, you come from a rural constituency. Exactly. I come from Uchipata, Chipangari. Mm. I come from Eastern Province. Why the, has he failed in the agriculture sector? You see, uh, the reason is very simple. It's becoming very clear and evidently very a, a, a factual to everyone to say that uh, this president promised what he could not do. Talk about the mining sector, talk about the agriculture sector, health sector, energy sector, just, Social sectors. So, yes, just scrutinize and assess him in all the key sectors. You discover that what he promised in terms of what you deliver is not what he has delivered because he does not have the competences. Look, the back doesn't stop only at the minister. Mm. Zambians don't elect for a minister. They elected the president. It is the president who assembles a cabinet team. It is the president who can hire and fire and who can even reshuffle. So the failures of Honorable Masebo, please, let's put her aside. Let's focus on the president because mm, mm. this is the man who's going to be assessed and to be judged by the Zambians in 2026 because they elected him anyway. The failure coming back to the agriculture sector is not an issue so much of uh, Honorable um, Mtoro Piri. It's a reflection of the president's policy and the president's leadership in the agricultural sector, in the way they have managed FISIP, in the way they have managed the fertilizer distribution, name it, it's scandalous. So there is nothing to talk about. For the very first time after decades, Zambians are now sharing a one bag of fertilizer into In Medaz. Medaz. It's not just a shame and an embarrassment for a president, but it is also a signature of his failure. That's the extent to which he has failed anyway in that sector. So we are talking about a president, number one, who set a standard very high mm. during the campaign promises when he was in the opposition. Against a president now, the same president who is in office, 
with all the instrument of power, with all the, the resources in his hands. So President Asia doesn't have a reason to fail in terms of resources, in terms of instruments, in terms of powers, in terms of institutionalization because he's the most powerful man in terms of a, as an institution. However, it is a clear demonstration and politically he is a crisis. What he promised Zambians, he was just lying. Look, there are things you can fake, but there are things you can't fake. Leadership, you can't fake it. President H.H. H. Sofa, it's clear that he faked leadership when he was in the opposition. Mm. In fact, he made it very clear that you had the best competences to run and transform Zambia. He made Zambians believe that he was one of the best economists. It's on record. He made it clear that he was one of the most successful businessmen and he was bringing bring these competences and the skills to State House to transform Zambia into a modern state. I can assure you where we are today in his third year is not taking Zambia to the paradise he promised. In mm. the health sector, in the agriculture sector, in the mining sector, in the energy sector, name it, is taking Zambia backwards. We are now sinking. It is on record that this president who, who made Zambians believe that he's among the best politicians with best skills is now depending on foreigners, whites. Mm. Mm. Is he hiring people from Europe and South Africa? People who even colonized us at some point from Britain are now back at State House helping President HH to run Zambia because on his own, with his own advisory team, he has lamentably failed. failed. Mm. He's on record. There is the Tony Blair Foundation at the State House today, hired by President HH, and they report to President HH. That's a signature that this president has failed. Therefore, he has to consult and engage external players to help him. Now, as I said, this is the president in 2020, 2020 2021 and 2020 who made Zambians believe that he has the best competences and skills. Has he succeeded? How do we rate him? Yeah. The fact that now he has even gone external to involve foreigners to run Zambia at the State House. We can't, uh, of course, give him not even, out of 10, we can't even give him a five. Mm -hmm. That is a pass average. We can't even give him a four. It's below three. So it's quite, for me, it's quite disturbing the fact that now we have imperialists as consultants. The Tony Blair Foundation is an imperial organization, mm -hmm. by the way. A sovereign state cannot allow such an institution to come and sit at state house. If at all they wanted such skills and competences to help them, why didn't they contract them through a ministry or some government agency outside state house? Because state house is the signature of sovereignty. It is the flag bearer of our independence. And who are our colonial masters? It's the British, where Tony Blair comes from. And by the way, Tony Blair is a former British prime minister an equivalent of a former British president, meaning that you have gone to engage a former president <laughs> mm -hmm. as your consultant, as your advisor in Africa in 2024 in this modernity. Mm -hmm. It's quite embarrassing. While he has a former president, is harassing. And he has a former <laughs> president in the name of President Edgar Chagualongo, who delivered, by the way. Mm -hmm. In the did sectors... You, did you consult President Rupia Banda and Dr. Kenneth Kaunda? Many times. Many times. Mm. President Lungu was a frequent visitor to President Rupia Buzan Banda and to President Kenneth Kaunda. A frequent visitor. Mm. And sometimes he would even go covertly on his own. Mm. But would we indicate to that I'll be engaging and I'll be meeting the first the founding father today, so I want to be alone. Or mm. Dr. Zimba, I would want you to accompany me tomorrow. I'll be visiting quietly President Rupia Bezan Banda. And you would go and engage them for an hour, chat, they have a tea together, mm. they talk, sometimes you'll be there, sometimes they'll have private engagements on their own. He will consult them on different national issues. Wow. So I want to put it on record that uh, the wisdom of President Lungu when he was in office was also part of it, an extension of President uh, Kenneth Rupia Kaunda Banda. and mm. President Rupia Bozan Banda because he engaged them and consulted them. And different other freedom fighters and statesmen and women 
President Lungu was very engaging and consultative. Now, what, I'm, what I wanted to, to put it on record is the fact that it's quite shocking that President H.H. -H has a privilege to have a president who delivered mm. in the mm. sectors is failing. Mm. In the sectors is stumbling everywhere, like agriculture sector, health sector, mining, energy sector. President Lungu delivered. Zambia was on the right track under the PF and President Lungu in these key sectors. This president who delivered is there. Is a phone call away from President H.H. Mm, mm. His door is wide open to engage and help President H.H. Mm. But President H.H. has decided to ignore him, rubbish him, and in fact at some point impose some form of a house arrest yeah. on President ECL. They would not even want President H. ECL to even go and attend a funeral. This is a government that wouldn't even want to see him to even go and pray and worship or with go other... For his medicals. A, even go for his medicals. Mm. So, mm. in a more practical sense, President H.H. H. is like, he has just put a house arrest on President Lungu. They don't want him anywhere to meet people or interact. So, mm. we are talking about a president who is missing opportunities because a president who delivered is right next to him and the phone call away from him. He can engage him. As we speak today, it's quite sad that a lot of Zambians are dying. A lot of Zambians are suffering. Yet solutions are, very, are not very far away from mm. President H.H. Mm. President Lungu has got some of those solutions because he was a president mm. and he knows what to do. And he can help President H.H. But do you know what he has done? As I indicated earlier, he has flown and gone to London mm. to invite the former president in the name of Tony Blair former Prime Minister of, 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 of Britain, to be his advisor. He's going to South Africa to get other imperialists to be his advisors in the name of Greg Mills. Mm. It's quite, sh it's quite mm. shameful and it's very unfortunate. Patriotism demands that President H.H. should have just walked and crossed the, the road to President Lungu, engage him, and try to consult and, him on our and, best. And there are many issues. skills and experiences from many Zambians, privileged Zambians, there are many. and um, uh, talented Zambians that could provide him proper exactly, advice exactly. than run to those institutions. Dr. Zimba, you are amazing many people because you wrote an article as soon as President Makainde um, Chilema held a press conference and attempted to demonstrate that his foreign policy was okay. He says, I go to the US and I go to China. You shouldn't worry where I am because you know, he's accused of being a Western puppet and he's been warming up with China recently. And you, you analyzed him because Ichilema said, look, Zambians should not worry what catches the mice, whether it's black or white, we should worry that this cat has caught the mice and your article was, uh, as usual, very <laughs> stingy. You said, now this cat can't even catch a mice. <laughs> exactly. And two days later, the exactly. police were looking for you. They revived some, you know, some uh, terrorism charges against you. And you ended up spending over seven, eight months in prison. And uh, we thank God for your lawyers, you know, who stood with you and fought that case. And exactly. you are exactly. a free man. Exactly. Now, your sense of resilience, because many people would walk away from there, timid, intimidated. But as soon as you came out, your articles didn't stop. Mm. The sting in them even was upped. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the bravery and courage <laughs> is even more stronger than it was before you went to prison. Just tell us about your prison experience and how you took okay. this entire, this difficult, very challenging process. Okay, thank you. So it was a, a very difficult situation and process to walk through. Mm -hmm. both for myself, my family, my friends, and uh, colleagues. Uh, it was very painful in the fact that, uh, in the sense that uh, it was a malicious imprisonment, a malicious charge. Malicious prosecution. Malicious prosecution designed just to punish and banish me. By virtue of my political engagement and write-ups, but also by virtue of my proximity to present ECL. So it was a double-edged sword. They wanted me and looked for me in my personal capacity because of, as you have indicated, because of my political advocacy and political analysis, but also because they believe of I'm close 
to the former president and uh, that would also mean a pun would also mean a punishment on him and embarrassment on him a charge of that magnitude and on nature would mean that even president Lungu to them is implicated mm. so they charged me deliberately and maliciously in that manner to punish me but also to link president Lungu to those malicious and false charges my stay in prison was not comfortable, was not a nice uh, experience, so to speak, just like it is not nice for any other citizen. Mm. A prison is a prison. It's a place where you, you work like a chicken. You start living like a chicken. Mm. They determine the time you should sleep and the time you should wake up. So 16 hours, you need to go and sleep. So outside where chickens and birds and children are playing, in a prison, you need to go and sleep at 16, at 16 hours. hours. You have to be locked up. My God. And when you are locked up at 16 hours, you need to wait and see the day, the following day at 8. And on some days, maybe at 10 hours. It depends the mood of the... Of the warders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are locked unto themselves. Yeah. So it's, a, it's quite... A, uh, what a traumatizing. Is, what is so the state speak. of our prisons? They say the state of your prison reflects the state of the country. Mm, what is the state mm. of our so prison? So I'll put it in order because I, I stayed in two different prisons. Where? And Chimbokaila where? as well mm. as Mwembeshi. So Chimbokaila is an old prison. That's where even President Haka Indeshirema also stayed at some point. When I went there, ah, it was pathetic. Mm. It was built in 1925, because I had to check on the history when I was there, I used to check and research. Shumbokaira was built in 1925 as a remote prison meant for 200 prisoners. The same facility has remained the same to date in 2023, 2024. Mm -hmm. Today, as we speak, a facility meant for 200 prisoners is hosting more than 1,000 prisoners, minimum. Mm. When I went there in May, when I was arrested and taken there in May, June, the total number was 1,300 inmates mm. in a facility mm. meant for 200. 200 persons, yes. So you must understand that it's a situation where in the what they call VIP cells, you can sleep maybe on a single mattress, mm. two people, three people. That's the VIP side. The rest at that particular time in June at Chimbokaira, in a prison meant, facility meant for maybe 50 people, you, they would load 120, maybe in fact meant, meant for 30 people. They would exceed 90. So they, you are not going to sleep, you'll be seated mm. and you need to pack each other like bags. So you sit here, another person comes to sit in front, another person, so you are loaded. You can't turn, you can't stand up, so you sleep while seated. If you have to turn, everyone has to turn. It has to be an announcement. Mm. And that is the situation at Shimbokaira. Many of these, our people were going through because I lived, I was there mm. Mm. at Shimbokaira mm. because of the nature of the facility. It is quite so small the presence and it's of dead. respiratory diseases, skin diseases, is as a result of those exactly. terrible conditions. And you see, within two hours, everyone will be sweating because of the, the ventilation is exactly, poor. Exactly, exactly. And then the facilities are very, exactly. very and congested. Then, and that is the situation until the following day. Mwembeshi is a different story. Mwembeshi has a modern prison yes, operations facility built mm. by the PF government and by President Lungu. Yes, <laughs> yes, and the IPP project. Yeah, exactly, mm. and he went to launch it when I was with him, former from President Lungu. So I went to Mwembeshi for the first time in 2020 when the president was launching it. Mm. Mm. Second time I was going there, you I was going, going there as, as an prison, inmate. As an inmate. <laughs> In a facility which was launched by my president and by my government. How are, that how are is the where facilities? it is a, a modern correction facility. Okay. Because everyone has their own bed. 
okay. their own mattress, their own beddings, their own plate, their own utensils. There's some sense of dignity. Exactly. There's dignity and respect for human life and human rights. Mwembeshi correction facilities. Built by ECA and the BF government. Anyway. Mm, 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 mm. Where President HH was and where he visited recently in the end of 2023 when I was there, that is uh, Chimbokaila. It is still a solid site. So he visited Chimbokaila while you were there? Yes, exactly. Did he have an opportunity to speak to you or the, the guards put you very far they didn't want you to meet? No, lucky enough, that's the day I, was before, I went to court. Oh, so so when I came present. back, I found that he, had, he was leaving. Ah, okay. And he, yeah, so I was happy that way. But you see, it's quite unfortunate. Even when he visited, unfortunately, he never even pardoned anybody. He only came to do some form of um, painting in the cell where he slept mm. in 2017. Mm. Or oh, you he slept never, in the cell where you also slept? At some point, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. But later on, I was moved into what they call the VIP. Mm. That's where I used to, that's where I was for a longer period of time. The human but, rights records mm. every year is a constant feature. The state of our prison, dehumanizing uh, conditions, inhuman treatment, it, it, it's a constant feature. It, exactly. I think, has never gone away mm. the last 10 years, the last 20, 30 years. Because even Honorable Nawak, we spoke about yes. the state of our prison. I'm glad that President uh, uh, Edgar Lungu at least built one modern facilities. What should be done? You cannot have citizens live like that. So the, 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 the much of the congestion, from what I, I noticed, the period I was there, it is the, the congestion before the court. Mm -hmm. We have people in prisons today that have not gone to court for seven years, for two years, for three years. Some they have gone to court, but they have appealed, and they have not been given a, day, a, a date before the court, mm -hmm. maybe for six years. So much of the congestion is to do with the, the, state, it, of our the state of our courts. And the backlog of and exactly, workload that exactly, our, exactly, exactly, both our magistrates exactly, and judges exactly. have. And that's the same story at police station level. We have got police stations that are keeping people in cells for months. How long were you at Ibex Hill and other police and Woodlands? One month, one week. Yet a police station should only be with, within 24 to 48 hours. 48 hours, exactly. So you see, much of the congestions we see and the, uh, in, in the prisons is because of what is happening at police level and court level. Mm. But I can assure you, the, the situation is pathetic. The Zambians who are supposed to have been out as a free people are being kept in prisons for months and years without mm. appearing before the court. And you know, for me, one of the conditions that um, would trouble me was the set of these uh, PIs, you know, uh, the foreigners that are here, prohibited immigrants. It's so unfair. The process is so unfair for them because the only crime is that they are here illegally. illegally exactly. And then they suffer those conditions. They have no relatives. You are privileged that people came to see you. People brought you things. You can imagine those Ethiopians, Somalians, and other foreign nationals with no relatives whatsoever. And, you know, sometimes it's just a state of their clothes. You see that, can we keep our people like this, really? I feel that... Uh, like on the issues of PIs. You know, South Africa doesn't keep you in prison. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for refugee status, I mean, or you are looking for asylum, they will just want to track you. They exactly, really will take exactly. you to what they call Mbombela, you know, prison for, for, to, to be remanded for prohibited immigrants. In our country, it's an, a punitive process. Mm -hmm. A foreigner is locked up. Yeah, so what has happened for this government, they are relying more on the PF Mwembeshi project. Mm. That's the prison facility, facility that has got some bit of space. So a lot of PIs now, they are not taken to Chimbokai. Mm. They are taken to Mwembeshi. And they are given, as I said, each is a bed space. Yeah. So in terms of the facility they are kept at now, it's a bit improved. But it's a duration mm. they are kept in prison because the prison is a prison. Yes, yes. It doesn't matter how they treat or they keep you. A prison is a prison. So it's this side of uh, inhuman treatment mm. 
where somebody by virtue of being in a foreign country for whatever reasons mm. you subject them and take them to a prison facility as if they are hardcore criminals mm. it's quite unfortunate and i met a lot of them the pis mm. from ethiopia from mm. somalia name it mm. west africa when i was at Membeshi, i used to find time to visit different wires Sales. they are called wires, wires. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a wire for a long term. There's a, then there's a wire only for PIs. There are two wires for PIs. Mm. So I used to take, to take them to visit them and engage them just to, to appreciate the when side of their stories. When they say it's an open prison, because it's an open prison, it's called an open prison, how different is it from Chimbokaila and others? Okay, so Mwembeshi has got three prisons. There is Mwembeshi Maximum. Okay. Mwembeshi maximum is just like uh, the Mkoveko maximum prison was. maximum mix. It's just like the one in Kawe, in Mkoveko. It's only for those capital offenders. offenses and offenders mm. with the maximum sentences, longer sentences. There is a no-go area. Okay. It's on its own. Okay. Next to it, it is on the same facilities. No, different, same area, but different. Uh, facilities and different okay. boundaries. Okay, okay. They are not like semi-detached prisons. Mm. No. Mm. They are standalone prisons. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. So Mwembeshi is just like a big farm with a, a three pr different prisons. Okay, okay. And the three different of a, a teams of officers managing them. They are managed separately. Exactly. Because okay. these are different prisons. So the Mwembeshi, there's what is now called, the, uh, the, the one the PF launched and built, is called Mwembeshi Kamwara Prison. Mm. So this Kamwara Prison here in town, I suppose I've gone to Mwembeshi. To be relocated. To be relocated. To, yes. That's a modern Mwembeshi prison where I was. Okay. And that one has got four different wires. Those wires are like prisons on their own. Okay. So there is a, for short term, those are only maybe imprisoned for small Three offenses. Six months, yeah. uh, it's a different wire. There's a medium term. Then there are two other uh, wires for PIs now. Because mm. the PIs are too many. Yes. They yes. come in buses and in numbers. Mm. <laughs> mm. So they have created their own space, prison space, around Mwembeshi Kamara prison. Mm. Mm. Then there is the Mwembeshi open prison. Yes. That's, yes. The, one okay. That's the old one. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. the old one. Why is it called open prison? Yeah, it's what an open one, just a wire. You can see them they walk in and out. But how do they sleep? There is a facility. It's a structure okay. inside. There okay. is still a structure inside. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And it's for those who have been in, in prison for some time and they've been trusted and they are about to go. You are an academic. Did, did you have an opportunity to research the, their libraries? Are you yes. going to write a special book about your experience in prison? <laughs> the president was in prison for 127 <laughs> days. The whole nation, the whole world knows that he was in prison for 127 days. You were in prison for over 127 yes, days. Yes, exactly. You were in prison for seven, eight months. Yes. So you see, some of the articles I'm publishing today, I wrote mm. them in prison. I see. <laughs> yeah. I see. So I had a lot of time to myself, and I could just write them. I mm. had a book, a plain papers. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife will tell you that uh, many times I always asked her to bring me a pen and a book or plain papers. So you have to maintain your sanity by exactly, at least engaging exactly, your exactly. mind yes, and yes, taking it away. Yes. So part of the boredom, the frustrations, the anger mm -hmm. went into writing. Mm -hmm. And that kept me going. So I kept on writing and writing and researching. Okay. Mwembeshi has a library, yes, just like in uh, Chubokaira. But Chimbokaira facilities are quite old. You just find those primary school mathematics books, predominantly. Mm. I don't know why they put a lot of mathematics uh, textbooks there. Mm. But Mwembeshi, yes, has got some modern library and uh, literature. So mm. I used to take time to go there and sit there and write. Ah, okay. Yeah, so there are more publications in terms of articles that will keep on come. coming. Mm. Because that mm. period was, for me, was preserved for writing. Mm. You see, when you arrest an author they, and the writer, they go and write. Yeah. Wherever they go, yeah. wherever you take yeah. them. Mm. Hitler wrote Mein Kampf yes. while yes. in prison. 
His and ideas were uh, far uh, in prison. Exactly. In prison. <laughs> so, I wonder what ideas <laughs> come so, from Mwembeshi. <laughs> Mwembeshi, exactly. So I had a lot of such in Mwembeshi mm. as well as in Ch- at Chimbokaila. So it's a matter of time, but as I indicated earlier on, some of the articles I publish and write, uh, they are a signature of what I was compiling when I was in prison. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. As we begin to wind up, I want you to provide a reflection on President Nakainde Ichlema's um, government. You touched on it a bit, mm. his failures in, in various sectors. Where is the trouble? Could any other president, if President, if president Edgar Lungu won, would he, we have faced the same challenges we are going through? Remember the criticism from UPND and President Akainde Ichilema is that, look, President Lungu left a mountain of debt. You know, he, he left corruption. He, he left misgovernance. Are those fair criticism? Okay, yeah, thank you. And on, for example, on the mountain of debt, what was uh, Patriotic France's plan and President Edgar Lungu's plan? Mm. Okay, thank you. So the, the criticism we get from the the President ECL gets from each HH is baseless, so to speak. It's, it's also very unfair. But at some point, it's rhetoric and lies. You remember very well that when President Lungu handed over power to President HH at Hero Stadium, a few weeks later, the figure President HH gave in terms of what was the, the outstanding date, and later on, his Minister of Finance, Dr. Sokotwani were two different figures. That was the beginning of trouble. That was the beginning of falsehood, and that was the beginning of double standards. And that things have not changed to date. I remember that before you go any further. Laura Mitty, in a posting, you know, one of the ardent supporters of President Ichilima, posted that day that the, the PF were criminals. They left a foreign debt of $35 billion. I personally challenged her on a, on a page, but it forced our members of parliament to ask a minister. Exactly. And the minister came a few days later to parliament and said the foreign debt was $11.9 billion. And then he said, okay, the public debt could be somewhere around $23 billion, but the foreign debt was $11.9, not $35 billion. That, I think, was also repeated by mm. President Ichilema. So that foundation is a rotten foundation in terms of governance and economic management of a state. Condemning the previous government of having overborrowed. In the space of two years, this same president and this same government have borrowed more than how much? The numbers are around $6 billion. So they're exceeding $6 billion in the space of two years. You're talking about a government that governed Zambia for 10 years and left an external debt of less than, less than 13 billion anyway. In the space of two years, you borrow more than $6 billion. So you see, political honesty is what is lacking in President H.H. He doesn't walk the talk, his talk. So the blame was heaping on President Lungu, who left the 12 billion US dollar debt cannot be justified by the mountain of debt he has given Zambia of more than 6 billion US dollar debt in two, in two years. Meaning that in five years, President HH is going to surpass the debt the PF left in the total of 10, 10 years. years. If President HH and the UPND government were to be given 10 years, it means they will leave us. In a, with a debt exceeding 25 billion US dollars. So the propensity at which he is borrowing is totally against what he promised and what he was condemning President Lung. Yes, he had stated yeah. that there will be a moratorium on debt until we resolve the issue. So we need debt. to assess President HH, as I said earlier on, against his own yardstick, his own benchmarks. He lied and he's still lying. You are talking about a president who is the chairperson of the Industrial Development Corporation, the IDC. The IDC is a, a baby, is an enterprise, a consolidated enterprise of the state that has got 35 parastatals 
in the form of enterprises or businesses, 35, 34 in 12 sectors. That's the path the PF and ECA wanted to take this country in terms of resolving some of our economic puzzles and challenges, in terms of addressing unemployment, in terms of trying to up industrialization and modernization. President HH, by virtue of his position as a Republican president, he is the board chairman of the IDC. IDC. Where are they taking the IDC and its 34 state enterprises to the dogs? It, they are sinking the IDC as we speak. Under President HH, as chairperson of the IDC, check the records. It's going backwards. That's a vehicle that would have used not only to resolve some of these external debts internally, but also, as I earlier indicated, to help us in terms of mass job creation and industrialization. We have departed. We are backsliding. And you, this president... Because we saw, for yes, example, but, under IDC that um, Kawamwa tea was revived. You know, this was a tea company from the 70s the and Unity, 80s, yeah, and, exactly. and yeah. that died. It was revived. I think there is some palm project in Pika. We saw uh, factories in Mwinilunga mm. and Petauke, mm. you know, fruit exactly. uh, factories uh, revived. KCM and... Uh, and then the big ones, KCM and Mopani. Exactly, and the exactly, 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 exactly. What, have, what has happened so far to those two mines? Because mm. well, those are under IDC anyway, under the PF. It's a crisis. We're not going to give this investor. It will never happen. A few weeks later, the same investor is given. Where has that investor taken the KCM? It is sinking. So you see, let's, let's forget about the rhetorics of President HH because as I indicated personally, and now Zambians of course know that, he talks mountains and paradise, but he delivers not only stones, but at some point nothing. So there is nothing much to compare ECL and HH in terms of economic management. Unfortunately, mm. empirically, there is nothing. Under ECL, I was not an economist. What was the cost of fuel pump price? It was less than 17 kwacha. This president, HH, who is an economist, promised that he's going to reduce it further down. Today, where are we? Two years, three years later, it is double. It's almost 30 kwacha. Where is the price of millimew, our staple food, for God's sake? Millimew and maize is what almost every Zambian lives on. The PF and ECL millimew was left in 2021 at below 90 to 120. Under the president who had promised to reduce the price of 25 kg a bag of millimew to 50 kwacha, millimew today is above 280 to 400 in some places. We are talking about a president who promised using hours. At 11 hours or 10 hours, I'm sworn in as president. At 14 hours, Zambians will be dancing in paradise because the exchange rate of the dollar would be at the less than this figure. It would be less than, if it would be less than 10, it would be less than 12. He was giving figures. And ECL left the exchange rate between one quarter, one dollar to 17 a quarter. Today, this same president, he has shifted the exchange rate from one dollar, now it's above 26 quarter. So you see, personally and factually, you cannot compare ECL and HH in terms of delivery and economic management of the state. Mm. ECL, by the way, is a president who was, a, he was a, an introvert. He was never in the media. He was never on social media talking and posting like the way President H.H. used to do, just like the traits also could see in President Donald Trump in the U.S., where a sitting president is posting and tweeting. Mm -hmm. ECL was more of a performer, a quiet performer. He believed in things speaking for him, not him speaking trying to justify what's delivered. So, when you talk about HX performance in two years to three years, 
against Israel. I see a mountain of differences. Because they are talking about somebody who delivered based on what people can point at and see. Based on somebody who only promised and unfortunately is still promising and is still just doing talking and talking rhetorics. So to me... So what are the prospects for our country 2024, 2020, 2025 <laughs> and 2026? It's, it's very difficult to, to even have options for hope. Because time is running and time is ticking. President HH was given a mandate for five years. Five years. This year, in the next few months, in the, ne in the, in the, in the next eight months, in fact, in the next seven months, you'll be clocking three years. You'd have crossed the middle line. Where we are, it's very difficult to predict where we are going in terms of hope both politically, economically, and socially or financially as a country. Especially under a president who promised and has not delivered, but is still promising anyway. Mm. It is the first time from, my, from the Zambian governance point of view to have a sitting president who, is still run, who, who runs the country as if he's in the opposition. You see, when you're a sitting president... You just deliver. You just deliver. You don't promise. <laughs> you don't promise. <laughs> but this government and this president, for the very first time, are still promising. Even when they are told that, look, there is corrosive embezzlement and corruption in your government, they are told by foreigners, like the Swedish ambassador, indicated to them this week, they go on the mountain, on the anthill, to deny and denounce... And demand for evidence. And demand for evidence. Mm. But you see, these are diplomats. They are neutral. They have no interest in Zambian politics. They are not the partisan. The UPND have a new narrative that the pain, challenges, and difficulties the country is going through is as a result of the PF and what they left. <laughs> They've been blaming the PF from day one to death. The PF is the reason we are in this economic crisis. The PF is the reason we have cholera. The PF is mm, the reason we have mm, all these outbreaks. Mm, what, what do you say to mm, that? Mm. I think it's good. It's good for the UPND that they are still blaming the PF. It's good for them. Because I indicate, as I indicated, time is running out. So let them continue blaming the PF. But the Zambian people, the majority of Zambian people who voted for them, remember, know who is in power and who is in government. So while they are wasting time blaming the PF, I can assure the Zambian people and the Zambian voters, citizens, are watching and following them closely. Did the PF leave damage which they are, they are saying they are repairing? So you see, there is, a, there is a no harm inheriting an economy that is not doing very well. Because you have promised that you're going to jumpstart it and improve it. And that's what happens. They promised that they're going to transform and govern Zambia better than the PF and than ECL. Unfortunately, the economic dynamics and indicators are pointing to the fact that the way they found Zambia was better to the way they have managed Zambia to date. So who is to blame between a president who gave Zambians mini meal, a staple of food, at 120 maximum, and a president who is now giving Zambians mini meal, their staple food, at 350 or 400 kwach? Who is to blame? So the Zambian people know who is to blame. Between the one who said, under me, the, because between the one who left the price of uh, the price of fuel at 17 kwasha per liter, versus the one who is now selling the price of fuel to Zambians at 30 kwacha. The Zambian people they know who to blame. Mm. It's not rhetoric because see, you see, you can't always succeed to fake. Leadership, you can't fake it. Leadership is like fatherhood. <laughs> for a parent. Yeah. Eh? Each father, they say, 
Nikuivulira. Mm, mm. If you want to judge a man who is potent or important, give them a woman and lock them in a bedroom. The results will speak for themselves. The woman will tell you what has happened inside. That's what the Zambian people have done. They brought in HH and UPND based on what they promised. And they were locked in the bedroom. And they've been locked in the bedroom. What are the results? <laughs> <laughs> That's what is happening. So you see, the blame game is false and fake. It's not going to help the UPND. It's not going to help the ratings of President HH. It's not going to increase their popularity. The blame game. On a government that delivered. On a president that left the economy standing against them who are governing. And the country is falling apart economically, politically, socially. Name it. Zambia today is more divided than before. Mm. Mm. The Zambian economy today is on its knees. The culture is one of the worst performing currencies in the world. You can't fake the, that and blame another person. Who has got a mountain of evidence to show what they delivered in 10 years? It doesn't work. That's the reason why I said, allow them to continue blaming the PF. Mm. They are wasting their own time. Time is ticking. In 2026, in August, I can assure you, judgment day is coming, politically for HH and the UPND. It will be Armageddon. Mm. It won't be a good one. It will be very harsh on in them. In fact, Dr. Zuman, that brings me to the other question. I know generals don't give advice on the medium, but what would be your advice to the opposition, <laughs> first yeah. to the PF and to the opposition? Because in the end, if Zambians have to kick out President Haka in the they want to look for a home, a new home, new hope in either mm. a person or yeah. a band of people mm. or an alliance of the opposition. What would be your reflections on that to the opposition? To the opposition yeah. My number one message to the opposition is to exercise political resiliency. Currently, uh, we live in a very oppressive society. This government is authoritarian in nature. They are arresting anyone and everyone. They do not want any criticism. They are so oppressive. So the opposition for them to stand the test of 2026 need to remain resilient. Exercise political courage and bravery. Because we have a government that doesn't allow political tolerance. They are not allowing the opposition to have political rallies. They are not allowing the opposition even to have simple or basic press briefings. Meaning they do not want another political voice or movement that will give a, an alternative voice to the Zambian people or a political hope. In that circumstance, and amid such a political environment, the opposition must remain resilient. And number two, the opposition must remain united. You can't fight this government single-handedly as a political party. Not even the PF, not even Socialist Party, mm -hmm. not, not FDD, mm -hmm. not any political party. The closest maybe is just PF anyway. But even PF, my recommendation, don't go solo. Unite, mobilize numbers. And you see, political collision and unity now in the opposition is natural, it's organic. Because you have got a government which is not different from the government of Sir, Roy, you know, Sir Evelyn Horn. Mm. Oppressive. So you have to remain united to fight it. It becomes a common political enemy anyway. So 2026, the opposition has have got one political enemy, an oppressive government, the, pre, the government of President Haka in They are oppressive, they are brutal. But I can assure you, the voter is more brutal. The voter is more forceful and more powerful than any government and than any president. So the opposition should not even be scared. You see... It's time for sacrifices. Sacrifice. Because the main force and the main power behind, behind the opposition are the, the citizens, of Zambia. the people mm. of Zambia. Hitler, I like using Hitler mm. because mm. I lived in Germany. I need to read the main camp again <laughs> and the history. Exactly. Oh, by the way, you were in Germany for your studies yeah, for exactly. two and a half years. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, he was one of the most brutal political leaders. Saddam Hussein in Iraq, he was one of the most brutal and oppressive leaders. We are talking about Amin in 
Uganda. He was one of the brutal leaders, very oppressive. Let's talk about Mobutu Seseko and the DRC Congo here. The UPND do take offense when we call President Richelema a dictator, when we call him an oppressive leader. <laughs> because remember, he came on a wave of popularity, exactly, yes, on yes, a democratic yes. process that was afforded mm, by the people mm, of Zambian mm, president, mm, uh, Edgar Lungu. He's, he's been branded, mm, uh, you know, especially by his supporters, like he's a Democrat, someone who's uh, uh, bringing freedoms. So for them to hear these words, characterize him to a dictator, mm. even compare him to Idi Amin mm, yeah. or Adolf Hitler, it's quite surprising. Are you fair in your assessment? Look, I'm a political scientist. So we don't assess leaders based on what they say. You assess leaders based on governance style, governance practices. It is not what they preach or what their political party members uh, talk about. It is about the governance tendencies. A government that is democratic is a government that provides political tolerance. Is a government that embraces divergent political views. Is a government that creates an atmosphere for other political organizations and other political players to exist freely. That's a government that is democratic. It's a government that allows governance institutions to operate independently without interference. That's a democratic government. This government is the opposite. Talk about the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Look at their conduct <laughs> for the past two years. In fact, the ECZ today is a conduit of the ruling party because the chairperson of the Electoral Commission of Zambia is a non party member of the UPND. That's a board that's supposed to be neutral. That is a board that's supposed to administer elections freely, fairly, and transparently in a country. That already is a dent on democracy. Because that woman, that chairperson, by virtue of her political alignment, might not pronounce her party leader and the candidate a loser. You wrote an article exactly. just last week exactly. that it is impossible for the ECZ to declare Akainde Ichilem a loser if he loses elections. It's because of what I'm saying. And it's happening for the very first time that a non-party member who wears party regalia can become a board chairperson, the top policy maker of a board that administers elections in Zambia. We are talking about the Zambia police. They cannot allow even Kasonde Mwenda to go at a lodge just to have a press briefing. They move in, crush him in pieces. You are talking about a government that lobbies and works with the state institutions to banish sitting members of parliament in Joe Malanji and Boma Nusambu from being members of parliament, but banish them off the ballot and unilaterally push their candidates to become members of parliament without competition, political competition. That's the government we're talking about. We're talking about a government that has arrested critics and opposition leaders almost on a monthly basis from the time they formed government. We are talking about a government that has put fact, a former president. There is a gentleman who is not very well known to many people, but mm he's -hmm. a human rights activist. Yes. And he operates in the space of human rights and uh, he fights for refugees. Recently, he has come into political space. Mm. Yeah, uh, Yosek Kunda. Oh, yes, exactly. And he was locked up. He criticized uh, the permanent secretary for home affairs um, because I think they had pulled down the billboard of, for, for mm, refugees. Mm. You know, we have assented to these um, conventions protocols and, and conventions. Yes. That should allow us to begin to give permanent mm -hmm, stay mm -hmm, or even mm -hmm, citizenship mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, refugees. It's mm -hmm. something to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So the permanent refugees that are in Zambia are demanding that mm -hmm. government does this. Mm -hmm. And Yosek Kunda has been their voice because he's exactly, a Zambian, yes. he has nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. And now he's locked up, he hasn't been given bond. So I'm just agreeing with exactly, you exactly. On, on, uh, on how they're locking up mm -hmm. critics, mm -hmm. activists, and whoever is uh, uh, attempting to bring them to account. So the praise singers in the UPND are wasting their time. They cannot defend 
authoritarianism of this leader and this government. They can't defend it. Neither can they switch talk and paint him a Democrat. Because if he was a Democrat, Democrats would have prevailed. Democrats has got tenants. It flourish. It shows. Look at how they are looting the state treasury, the national treasury, with the, by compensating their own cadres. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> that is not democracy. We have Jackson Kungo. He was provincial chairperson for Northwestern Province under the PF. He was murdered by the UPND in cold blood on an election day in 2021. President HH has never mentioned him in his speech. And on the list of the people he mentions, we are murdered through politics. Nobody is talking about his composition. They only talk about UPND cadres. We are talking about a government that has put a, seat, a former president practically on house arrest. How democratic can they claim to be? If they can't allow President Lungu even to go and attend the funeral, to go and attend the church service, how democratic is President HH? You are talking about a government that can be threaten a media house. Hot FM was threatened for hosting Dr. Sichua Sichua through IBA. I followed that. I was in prison. If you continue hosting such people, such views, you'll be closed. Mm -hmm. So you see, there is no hypocrisy around this, the, this president and this government. We are under authoritarian rule. He was elected on a democratic ticket, using democratic tenets, tenets that is governing in an authoritarian fashion and authoritarian model. Zambia was a democracy up to 12th August, or in, let me say 15th August, when President Lungu handed over power. Because President Lungu respected the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why he willingly considered defeat and handed over power. Under President Lungu, UPND, HH, and other political party leaders across the country were campaigning freely. They were having press conferences. Nobody was arresting critics of government. I was a critic of President Lunga and the PF. I was never arrested or intimidated by anybody. Yeah, your articles were very, yes. very strong. Yes, mm. no, nobody threatened me. Today, as I sit here, I've received phone calls for the few articles I've written, direct through my wife, through my uncles in Eastern Province, to say, if he continues writing and criticizing this government, we'll go back to prison, we'll go back to prison for good, or we are going to eliminate him. My God. And this conversation is not only my story. It's a story I read all from, uh, from all of you, including Sean mm. Tembo. I met Sean mm. Tembo last week, as, uh, some few weeks ago, and we had a chat. He said, oh, I've received these threats through my uncles, my aunt, mm. and family members, and mm. people are saying, stop. They are saying they will kill you. They will arrest you. You can't talk about democracy in such an environment. You can't talk about democracy in such a state. So coming back to your point, it is easy to talk about democracy, but it's difficult to show the evidence of democracy in the manner you are governing. Mm. Because it's not about what you say, it's about how you govern. So, yes, Zambia is a multi party democracy. The Constitution says so. Elect President Lung was elected in that fashion and in that manner. But how he has governed so far, from the time he took office to date, I can assure you, it is authoritarianism. That is not democracy. Because he is the only one speaking, having press conferences. Mm. The UPND mm. are the only ones who can have political rallies. Mm. Nobody else apart mm. from themselves. Mm. Apart from the other issues I've just raised. Oh, wonderful. Well, I would like to thank you for giving us an opportunity and to give us these insights and for telling us who Chris Zuman Zimba is. So I'm so grateful and I think our audience will follow you. To our dear listeners and viewers, I would like to thank you for staying with us. Today we're featuring uh, Dr. Chris Zuman Zimba. He's an academic, he's an author, he's a publisher, and he was, as you may know, served as special assistant to the president in charge of political affairs. He was a political advisor to President Edgar Lungu. I wish you well in your political endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ambassador. And to our dear viewers, shalom, shalom. God bless Zambia. God bless us. Enjoy. This is DJ Mutati exclusive.
Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.